everybody. Today we are going to be making a drawing of an eastern box turtle in a cove forest. So the first thing that we are going to do today is draw the turtle and then add some features of a cove forest underneath and behind our picture and then we are going to watercolor it all in. Here are the materials you will need for this project. First of all, watercolor paper. You'll need a pencil, a permanent marker, watercolor tray, a paintbrush, a cup of water, and some paper towels, tissues, or napkins could be really helpful. So, let's get started. Okay, the first step to drawing the box turtle is to draw a curved line that looks like a smile. On top of the smile, we're going to draw a series of bumpy lines right on top of it. They kind of look like teeth, but this is the bottom of the turtle shell. Next, we're going to draw the top of the turtle shell, and it is going to be a very tall curved line that kind of looks like a hill that's flat on top. Now we're going to divide up the turtle shell into different sections. Box turtles have these different sections on their turtle shell with different markings and patterns inside each of the sections. The next step is to draw the turtle head. Turtle heads um, kind of have a pointy nose up near their eyes and their head can retract back into their turtle shells. So it's kind of peeking out underneath. We have a little eye and a little smile. The next step, we're gonna draw the turtle legs. We're just gonna draw two legs because we're only looking at one side of the turtle. turtle. Turtles have little claws that come out from their legs, little long toenails, so we're gonna also add those as well. We're now gonna draw the bottom of the turtle shell, kind of like the belly of the turtle, which the legs kind of retract between the turtle shell and the bottom of it. In each of the sections in the turtle shell, we're now going to draw a pattern or design. They kind of look like squiggly shapes. They don't have an exact specific um, look but any kind of design works well in each of the sections. I'm only going to draw designs in the larger sections and leave the small little bumpy teeth-like sections on the bottom of the shell empty. Alright, and there you have your box turtle. Next, we need to add a background. So turtles live and crawl along the bottom of this cove forest. So we're gonna remember that the, the turtles are pretty small. They're not very big. So I am drawing the trunk of a tree. I'm not gonna draw the top of the tree because you wouldn't see it if you were looking at a box turtle on the ground of the forest floor. I'm gonna draw a large rock. Just um, 
ground or rocks for the turtle to stand on and now I'm going to draw some plants and grasses behind the turtle so I'm not going to draw over the turtle just going to make up some leaves of different um, potential plants that are in the cove forest and I'm going to fill up my picture draw some long grasses over here which really aren't that long but compared to a turtle they are pretty tall and behind the grasses I'm going to draw another plant remember if something is behind something else then you're going to stop your mark when you run into that other objects so as you can see, I didn't draw over the turtle's head or over the shell. I kind of stopped when I got right up next to the edge. Now I'm going to take my Sharpie or a permanent marker and I'm going to trace over all of my pencil marks. And the reason I do this is when I go to watercolor, all of my nice pencil drawings stand out. So take your time. all your pencil marks All right, there we go. We have traced over all our pencil um, drawing and now we are ready for watercolor. Now the key to having a great watercolor piece of artwork is to use plenty of water and to go slow. So watercolor needs a lot of water and each little oval you want to make sure you have a nice little puddle of water and you kind of mix up the watercolor into that puddle of water. I also want to make sure that I rinse out my brush every single time I change my colors. Now, I love to mix colors, but I like to do it on my paper so that my watercolor tray stays nice and clean in case I want a really clean color. So right now, I am watercoloring in all the pattern first. One thing about watercolors is they're very watercolory or watery. and if I, after I paint one color, it takes a little bit of time for it to dry. So I want to let it dry if I'm painting right next to it. For instance, around these yellow spots, um, the box turtles have a darker brownish gray color around the yellow spots. Now, if I went ahead and painted the brown right now as the yellow is wet, it might blend together, which might be what I want, but I kind of want to wait and let the yellow spots really shine. So I'm going to let the yellow spots dry while I paint another area that's not right next to them. Okay, I'm going to start with use this green and start to paint some of the plant life in the forest. I'm taking my time making sure that I fill in all the areas and if I need a little bit more water I make sure that I get that. Like I said, I love to mix colors, but I like to do it on the paper. So I put down a little green on this leaf first, and then I rinsed my brush out and got some brown so that I could kind of create a brown, a darker green color. Going back over this green leaf, a little bit of brown to make it darker. Thank you. 
All right, next I'm gonna fill in these rocks down here at the bottom of the forest floor. I'm gonna paint them um, a little, a light black, which looks more gray. If you want a watercolor to look darker, what I suggest is painting one layer of the color, letting it dry a little bit, and then going back and paint, adding some more. That way you'll layer on color and it'll look, it will get the, um, as dark as you would like it. All right, I'm still not, as you've noticed, I'm still not going back to those yellow spots on my turtle because I really wanna make sure they're nice and dry so that the colors don't mix. If your colors do mix, you can take your paper towel or napkin and you can kind of soak up the watercolor and it it takes it off the page so that you can start again and um, paint exactly where you want to without the colors running together. But of course, a little watercolor running together can sometimes look like a really beautiful um, section on your piece of artwork. Now I'm going back and adding a little bit of yellow to these leaves to make them more yellowy green. And I'm adding another layer of brown to my tree to make some of the sections a little darker to create some contrast. These yellow spots seem to be dry enough for me to paint around them. But I'm going to start first with the body of the turtle. Go ahead and paint in the head and arms. The box turtles have a lovely brown and yellowish color. Oh, I've got some green. I painted a little bit too close to the green and it started to bleed into the turtle's face. So I kind of wiped it away. to another section that is a little bit drier all the way around. finish up the rest of the turtle and then the sky.
All right, there you have it. A watercolored box turtle in a cove forest. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have fun making some art.